dump trailers are some of the most useful multi-purpose trailers you can have but there's one accessory that can make a dump trailer 10 times more user friendly than what it already is and it's this right here this is a wireless controller and today i'm going to show you how to add one of these to your dump trailer in about 15 minutes for about 15 dollars when you buy a trailer new you can get these as an option and normally the factory wants two or three hundred dollars on top of the price of the trailer just for this little wireless remote and you don't have to spend that but first we got to figure out why the trailer doesn't dump and we got to fix that too First thing we're going to do is troubleshoot this no dump situation and the first thing we need to do is check and see if we're if we even have a charged battery. Uh, we know the battery charger on this doesn't work so I'm just going to ground my ground lead right here on the motor. I would, I would ground it somewhere else but I don't really see a cable anywhere. This is the cable coming from our battery to our solenoid and if you watch that meter we have about 11.4 volts which isn't great but it's good enough that should cause this motor to run and trailer to lift so now we need to test the other side of the solenoid where the cable actually comes out and goes down into our motor and i suspect this solenoid is bad but we're going to test it and do all our homework just to be sure so what you do is you move you leave your ground plug where it is you move your hot plug over to what's about to be the new hot post and you hit lift So the solenoid clicked, but it didn't actually allow any power to transmit through there. I think we got a bad solenoid. Let me show you how to completely bypass the electrical system here so we can get this box raised up and get that safety lock in. Now you're gonna need another source of power. I'm using this jump pack. You could use jumper cables or whatever. Connect your ground lead to a solid ground. Right here, it's just clamped to the base of this motor. That's not ideal, but it's gonna work. We're gonna come over here to where the power cable goes into the motor, put a little power to it like I've already done, and the trailer goes up. The reason the trailer goes up when we apply power is right here. It's because this solenoid only controls lower. As soon as this motor runs, the pump runs, and it pushes fluid through this hose, through that cylinder to make it go up. Now, once we've got our safety lock in place and we have to lower it down into this little cup, we're gonna come back around here, take our power and apply it to the power post on the solenoid. And as you can see, the solenoid opened, the box is coming down. And now it's resting securely on that safety lock so we can get in here and address things like <laughs> yeah what do i even say we are going to add a wireless control unit to this dump trailer so you can dump it with a remote from almost anywhere if you're in the cab of the pickup you can dump it if you're standing over there you can dump it if you're wherever now from the factory it came with this corded remote that has a little quick connect here the quick connect got broken at some point so somebody just wired it directly in it works the cord is long enough to reach up to the driver's window so you can you know you can be in the seat so if you're trying to spread some rock while you're dumping it or something like that you can do it with this remote but then you've got all this cable that's either you know banging on the side of your pickup or dragging on the ground or limiting how far you can turn if you need to make a right hand turn or something to that effect so we're going to add this this wireless remote now from the factory a wireless control unit is a couple of hundred dollar option usually but i bought this one right here on amazon for under 15 dollars. i don't remember the exact price but it comes with two remotes and the relay now this is actually the second one of these i bought the first one i bought uh, i used on the winch you guys have seen me using all the time but one thing you're going to notice about these remotes is they say out and in instead of up and down that's because this is advertised to work with a 12 volt off-road winch but it works with any 12 volt system as long as you want a momentary button i'll talk more about that in just a second for now let me show you how to install this thing 
So here's our little relay, and it may look complicated, but it's actually very simple. We only have five wires coming out of this, and this one on the left we don't even have to worry about. This is our wireless antenna. The next two are these red and black ones here. These are the power and ground for the relay itself. So this red one, we're gonna take over here and connect to battery power. Now, one thing you need to be aware of is the ends that come crimped on these may not be the right size for what you're working on. Like this one right here, this little red power, uh, power end, that's too small to fit on this lug. So I am gonna cut that off and replace it with one that's got a little bit larger ring on it so it'll fit. And then we're gonna take our ground wire and just attach it on one of the mounting screws here on the back of our lift solenoid. If you're in a situation like this where you have a fairly small diameter wire like we do here, but you need a pretty large sized ring to go over whatever you're connecting to, your crimp connector might actually be for the wrong wire size. It's probably gonna be bigger. One thing you can do, what I normally do, is just strip back about double the length you actually need, twist the wire together, and then fold it over on itself so it's just a little bit thicker, and that'll make it fit in this connector, and you'll get a much better connection. Just be careful that you don't get any insulation or little fibers or anything like that in there when you're doing it. And note, I do have the battery disconnected. Not only right here, but also on the terminal itself. If you were super careful, you could do it and leave the battery hooked up, but there's just no reason to take that risk. Disconnect it. It only takes a minute. So we've got our power and our ground hooked up for the relay here. I'm going to turn on the remote and we're going to do a little testing. I'm gonna use the out button for up and the in button for down. That just makes sense, right? Up, down. But I need to know which one of these wires gets hot when which button is pressed. So that's why we've got the fluke meter over here. Now you may be saying, Blake, why don't you just read the directions? I'm not reading the directions because they're terrible and in some foreign language that's only barely halfway translated. This is faster, this is easier, trust me. All right, so we'll come right down here and we're gonna start with our yellow wire because it is the one closest to my hand. Touch the meter to it, turn on the remote with the little button on the side. You can see that red light came on at the top and let's hit out. I can hear the relay click but we're not getting any power on this yellow wire. So let's hit in. Now we have power. Okay, that tells me this yellow wire is programmed to the in button and the white wire is programmed to the out button. So here's how we've got our little relay box wired up. I've got it mounted to the back of the toolbox just temporarily with that one little self tapper, but the power from the relay goes to full time hot battery power. It's on the same post of this solenoid as the main cable that comes from the battery underneath the box. The black wire that comes off this solenoid just goes to ground. Now, because the main battery is grounded to the frame of the trailer, I just grounded that to the frame of the trailer right there. Our white wire we know is programmed to the out button on the relay. Now, it makes sense to me that's the top button. I want to, you know, push the top button for the trailer to go up. So I want stuff to come out of my trailer. We connect our white wire to the power terminal here on the solenoid. And you can see we've also connected the wiring from this, uh, the corded remote connector. I put a new connector on that. I got to get some actual bolts to hold it in there. But the yellow wire we know is programmed to the in button. So if I want to put something in my trailer, I'm going to hit this bottom button and let the box come down. Now that yellow wire is tied in right down here with the only post on our lower solenoid. So I've provided a link to the exact relay I bought down in the description over on Amazon. And one reason I really, really like this particular relay and this particular brand is not just the fact that it's one of the least expensive ones I could find right now, but it comes with two of these big remote units. Some of these you'll see only come with one remote or maybe they come with one big one and one small one that goes on a keychain. 
I don't like a bunch of stuff on a keychain. I would rather have two big remotes uh, for my personal stuff. Like I have this exact same relay set up on my cordless winch. I keep one remote in the toolbox on the trailer and I keep another remote right in the pickup because if I'm using the winch, I'm gonna be using one of, if not both of those vehicles. So that's why I really enjoy having the big ones. They're easy to use. They're easy to manipulate if you have gloves on because it's only two buttons. If you're interested in one of these relays, click the link in the description and head over to check them out on Amazon. If you buy through that link, Amazon throws the channel a small percentage to say thank you for sending you over there. So it's a way for you to help support the channel, help me keep creating videos like this one, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. Thank you for watching. More later. What? Is it stuck? There.